Now I'd like to invite Dr. Hemlata Gupta for, for our next talk. She'll be talking about chandelier assisted cataract surgery. This is a technique which has uh, its origin uh, from the fact that very often cataract surgeons need to handle cases which don't have a great view because of a hazy cornea or a hazy uh, media and how this technique can help in those situations. Another often instruments from the VR machine which can be useful in these cases. Over to Dr. Hemlata. A very good morning to all of you. Thank you, Dr. Ritesh, for having me here. I'll be talking about the chandelier illumination assisted phaco emulsification in hazy cornea. So all of uh, us encounter such dense corneal uh, opacities in our day-to-day -day practice. Doing cataract surgery under conventional microscopic illumination is a real uh, challenge in these eyes because of the poor intraoperative visibility. And why does that happen? Because light from the microscopic uh, microscope in these eyes is unable to enter inside the eye or is scattered causing poor red glow. And hence we have decreased depth perception. So there are various techniques to enhance the intraoperative visibility. One is the, we can use the intraoperative uh, uh, tripen blue dye and creation of the pupillary uh, sphincterotomy is also one of the techniques and use of endoilluminators that can be placed either via the anterior chamber or via the plus, uh, pars plena route. Now the interior chamber illuminators work really well when you have mild to moderate corneal haze. The only problem is that you need a very uh, good trained assistant to hold the light pipe in position because if the surgeon wants to do bimanual manipulations, then it could be a problem. So that problem is not there with the chandelier illuminator. So how does the chandelier system work? So when you have a corneal opacity, as we know that the light uh, from the microscope falls on the cornea and because of the opacity, it gets scattered back and that is what is leading to poor red glow. But with the wide angle illumination of the chandelier illuminator, when the light falls on the cornea, it gets reflected back. And this just bypasses the corneal opacity, leading, giving you a very good red glow. So you get a good intraoperative visibility with uh, increased depth perception. And why the conventional light sources uh, uh, do not work with this? Because they, with 20 gauge, when we used to do uh, 20 gauge uh, vitrectomy, and the uh, illuminators uh, uh, used to use sources like halogen and metal, metal halide. But when we shifted to a uh, smaller gauge uh, uh, vitrectomy, the illumination that we receive with the, or we achieve with the halogen and metal halide is 50% uh, less. To compensate for this decrease in brightness, the newer light sources were introduced like xenon and mercury. And the, the, the kind of illumination we achieve with the xenon and mercury sources is uh, equivalent or better than the uh, uh, conventional light sources. So there are various uh, standalone xenon light illuminators that are commercially available like Photon, Acurus, Bright Star, Constellation Vision System, Stellaris, PC. And uh, these uh, mercury vapor illuminators is, uh, I mean, much better and brighter source of illuminators with lumin luminous efficacy reaching up to 402 lumens per watt, and which is brighter than any commercially available xenon light illuminator. So what are the indications? Uh, the, uh, uh, we use it mainly for the one-eyed patients who may be at high risk candidate for combined corneal transplantation and cataract procedures, where we might feel that the where we feel that the patient might achieve adequate vision after cataract surgery alone. However, most of the surgeons are reluctant to, to uh, touch such cases, uh, fearing the intraoperative complications because of poor visibility. I'll so, uh, show few such cases. So this is the first one where uh, the patient had this dense leukomatous corneal opacity in the center. So we are placing the chandelier in the past plena area. And when you make the light pipe vertical, you can see that you get a very good uh, red glow bypassing the corneal opacity. So then we switch on the microscopy light, make the ports, stain the capsule with the tripen blue dye and once that is done, we shift to the chandelier illumination and perform the capsulorexis under chandelier illuminator. You can see how good the red glow is because we have stained the capsule. So margins of the capsules are visible throughout the surgery. So the problem uh, with the corneal opacity is when you do the intraoperative manipulation, you chop the nucleus, so you don't have any idea of the depth perception 
but with the chandelier illuminator you can see that you you know where you're working so all the pieces are emulsified safely see how uh, poor the intraoperative visibility is if you we don't use the chandelier illuminator and then this uh, cortical matter is being aspirated capsular margins are clearly uh, visible and then we inject the intraocular lens safely inside the bag which is not possible in many of these cases under conventional light because we don't know whether the iol has entered inside the bag or the haptics are there inside the sulcus so in the end we just pull it out no need of suture it's a self sealing wound so uh, we just need to press it for some time so it self seals so this is another case uh, with even denser op opacity involving most of the cornea with a very very poor intraoperative visibility so again we are uh, using the chandelier to assist in the fake emulsification so once the light pipe is in position then we stain the capsule see how dense the opacity is and now when we perform the capsular access with retro illumination you can see that yes now one once the first nick is given you are able to see the excess margin the problem with the corneal dense corneal opacity is if uh, you are not able to vis visualize the excess margin there are chances of capsular tears intraoperatively and sometimes while uh, doing the capsular uh, the the cortical as aspiration you tend to pull out the excess margin and that can lead to zonular dialysis so all these complications can be prevented if you use uh, chandelier so it i mean makes the surgery really safe as compared to the normal conventional microscopic illumination so even polishing is possible we get such a good view that even polishing is possible in the end so here we end the case so uh, i'll just show one more case because that patient uh, had really really bad cornea and uh, we were i mean reluctant to touch this case because because this patient was one eyed and was having glaucoma also associated with it because these patients have number of ocular comorbidities associated like compromised endothelium and glaucoma but then uh, and retina people are very confident so they advised us to use chandelier so this uh, <laughs> patient again uh, had very visual uh, good visual outcome so uh, the beauty of the chandelier is that it just bypasses the corneal opacity now you are not able to see any corneal opacity and you get a very good red glow mm -hmm. so even in such bad cornea we were able to perform uh, fake emulsification like we do in a routine surgery another problem is when you are doing the uh, phaco procedure many a times there is shattering of the uh, lens fragments and small pieces they go behind the iris or they uh, you know have uh, they get lodged in the sub incisional space so because of the poor visibilities you miss uh, those out and uh, already these uh, this is a glaucomatous eye and this compromised endothelium so those lodged pieces lead to intense inflammation in the post operative area so it's very very i mean uh, essential it's essential to remove all those pieces carefully before you end the surgery so with this kind of uh, visibility it's possible to uh, remove all the pieces in the end you can see that there are sub incisional small nuclear fragments so every single small fragment is visible so once you i mean complete the nucleus removal then we safely take out the cortical uh, matter and implant the lens in the end so the advantages of the chandelier illumination uh, is it's a smaller gauge surgery and uh, there is easy entry without the need of any conjunctival peritomy uh, by virtue of its design it's self retaining so allows uh, by manual procedures it has wide angle illumination there is four fold increase in contrast and two fold increase in resolution when you place the illuminator behind the cataract there is very less corneal scatter and better interior segment visualization you avoid the need of high risk open sky cataract surgery and it's very easy to remove leaving the self sealing wound 
Phototoxicity is still a concern, and uh, but with the newer commercially available xenon illuminators, uh, they have uh, modified it and uh, lowered the wavelength, cutting off the ultraviolet and blue lights to reduce the phototoxic. City and but it's more of a concern in the retinal surgery since the cataract surgery duration is short. Uh, we are not bothered about the phototoxicity uh, with the cataract surgery. So to conclude, uh, chandelier illumination is a very helpful technique for enhancing the intraoperative view uh, of the lens for safer phaco emulsification through a very hazy cornea. It provides a high intensity hands-free source of illumination and can be safely adopted by most of the cataract surgeon in the presence of mild, moderate to even denser corneal opacities. Thank you uh, for your patient listening. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Hemlata, for showing us such difficult cases. Uh, two important tricks uh, into the surgery is whenever you put a chandelier illumination, ask your assistant to make it vertical. Because if it is horizontal, it will give a whitish kind of a hue uh, on the lens. And uh, you will find uh, there will be not much of a glow. So ask your assistant to make it vertical. The moment you make it vertical, the glow becomes absolutely uh, red. But it, if it is uh, horizontal like this, it shines into the cataract and you won't get a good glow. Uh, second thing is whenever you are introducing any instrument into the eye, put on the microscope. And once you are do performing the surgery, put off the microscope. All the surgery is done under darkness. It's not under microscope light. The only visualization what we see here with the chandelier illumination. And that is the trick. If the microscope light is off, then you get a good depth of perception. The moment the microscope light is on, you won't get a good depth perception. So the thing is that uh, these patients I, I are like... Also wanted to add that in such a situation, would it not be prudent to do a peripheral and complete oh, iridotomy? PI. Or a, or a, or a complete iridotomy. The sector iridotomy. Yeah. Or a complete iridotomy. You can't see optical iridotomy. If we do an optical iridotomy over there, it will be very So if you see, have seen these cases, most of the patients have central opacity. The inferior uh, area and the nasal and the temporal yeah, is right. still. So the patient is able to see. CI will be important. CI Actually, cataract surgeons are very reluctant to do either a sphincterotomy yes. or a CI. I mean, even when I write down, please do it, they, they, they tend yeah. to avoid me. So the patient I don't know was why, very happy your with a good vision, but the then, uh, yes, that is a very good idea. So the last next thing. what we showed hmm. improved the 618 vision. Yes, okay, the patient was very, very happy. I, we totally agree to you. Please yeah. understand what we are doing. Yes, yeah. the iridectomy, uh, we, we, we should be doing. Many times we are working for ourselves and not for the patient. The sector iridectomy is a good idea. Yes. Next we'll do that next, next time. Next time we'll see. Yeah. Uh, moving on to our next.